Welcome to another episode of Dinner Starts Here. Obviously, back in the greenhouse, we've got Joe growing peppers at Enniskillen Peppers. Thanks for having us. Yes, you're welcome. So, in behind us, we've got these are, I mean, I see green and yellow peppers, but are they all going to turn yellow? Is all going the plan? To turn yellow. Yes, every pepper starts out green and then it uh, turns to color. So, there's oh. no true green pepper anywhere. Oh, really? Yes, that is why it is bitter, is because it's an unripe pepper. So, even when I get a green pepper, it's not actually meant to be that. It's, yes. They've picked it early. Premature. Yep. Oh, really? That is why it's cheaper. That, oh, because it doesn't grow as long yes. either. Yep. Oh, neat. Well, then maybe we can kind of walk in and take a look at a couple of sure, things in here. That, yep. Now, first thing I've noticed, Joe, is Roland's Plant Farms here, and we were there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, is that how your peppers start? You get them from the Roland's family? Yes, actually, we uh, receive them at 35 days old. They're seeded um, roughly in end of October. And then we receive them December 1st from Rolling Plants at 35, just a small plant about this high. Mm -hmm. And they come in. So they start out Rolling's and they come here. And then we uh, put them onto the block. They are just going in the small cube and then placed onto the slab when they arrive here. Now, how long? I mean, you've got extremely tall peppers. And that's one thing that I would never guess that a pepper plant would grow this tall because mine in my garden no. do not. No. Nope. How long does it take to get this tall and how do you get them this big? So they were planted December 1st, this plant here, and then um, we've been growing since then. Um, our first production starts the end of February. And uh, for growing this tall, you can see here if you look closely, um, we are constantly removing branches off of the plant. So yours in your garden branches out into many stems mm -hmm. and you have a, more of a horizontal growing. We keep it vertical, so we're constantly pruning branches off such as this would come off, leaving a flag leaf, and then we can maintain the plant growing up. It doesn't naturally wind, there's a twisting done by the employees such as this and to keep growing up. Oh, okay. And then now we've got a flower up here. Yes. That's going to be a pepper. Yeah, so you can see on a flower. Um, I'll remove one up here, sorry. So here on a flower we have um, the beginning stages and actually what you're eating when you eat a pepper is the center, what they call peduncle, but anyway, it doesn't matter, is the center uh, part that will swell and become the fruit. And this is just the calyx left over and the petals have now fallen off here, as you can see. Oh, so yeah. Left the and then how long from flower to this to your picking? So from flower um, to picking is about eight and a half weeks. And so we usually start to count them at the end of our pinky size so that we can um, uh, know for sure they will stay on the plant. And then that's about uh, seven weeks from there. Seven weeks from there and you go in. So how, how often are these plants being picked through? Twice a week. Twice a week you're going through and picking yeah. them out. And so. they pick about 90% color, so they're allowed a little bit of green so that by the time it's at the store it's fully colored because people can't know that it was green originally. Yeah, isn't that neat? So, okay, so first couple of things I want to chat about while we're here. I see this pack and we talked with this about Adrian Roland before, but maybe you can kind of remind us. What's the pack with a bug, picture of a bug on it? So in greenhouse industry we are accused of using chemical quite heavily, but actually we've reduced it a lot in the... Uh, recent years. So inside of here is a breeder system of a bug that takes care of the eggs of a bad guy. And so they crawl out of the hole and then they generate through the population or through the plants very quickly. And then um, we can take care of the egg form of the bad guy until we get a um, the day length is long enough for another good guy to come and take care of the problem. So mm -hmm. it's uh, just basically good against bad. Um, so we buy the good guys to take care of the bad guys and use very little chemical. And this crop has not been sprayed as of yet and probably will only get one or two sprays in a year. Oh really, so you're, it's, it's not like, cause you, you, you're right, you say that people have this idea that you use a whole bunch of chemicals. Your really goal is to not use No, I don't say we will never use it, but um, basically when you bring in good populations, you have to balance with the bad one. So sometimes we have to take care of a spot of the bad guy that's too concentrate until the good guys overcome him. So that would be a spot spray um, that is done occasionally, but very reduced uh, times. The other thing, and this comes from a comment that I got actually just a week or two ago, is that's not dirt that you're growing it in. And I got a comment from somebody that said, well, they don't like buying greenhouse grown products because it's not as natural, because it's not grown in soil and therefore it's not as nutritious. Is that true? Well, we can take a look here. This one is actually grown in cocoa. So we've got cocoa going here. Um, so the cocoa comes in from Sri Lanka. It is dried. It is rinsed of salt because it's very high in salt. And then from there, we pump it up and begin to grow the plant. So this is a little bit more soil, I guess, soilish than um, perhaps rock wool, which is a common growing media also. So here is a dripper. And this is what the water is given through. And we do use synthetic fertilizer. 
and then it is given to each plant. So every week I take the nutrition of what the plant would drain and what it receives, and from there I make a new recipe every single week. And so, so you're like a plant nutritionist, basically. Yes, yeah, I'm anything that needs to be done. So, <laughs> um, so then from there, uh, you cannot say the fruit is not as nutritious because um, actually there's better CO2 concentrations in here. The light we're receiving, the temperature, everything is perfect for the plant to produce optimal sugars. Um, the only reason that you would perhaps taste a uh, difference between greenhouse and field production is that field would go through a dry time and a wet time. So there is a, perhaps the concentration of sugar is higher, whereas here we're giving enough water all the time, it's optimal, so your sugars would just be more diluted inside of the fruit. Yeah, so the so sugar concentration would be more actually in greenhouse production. In greenhouse, because it's so consistent, it's so yeah. perfect. And the extra CO2. Every single day. Too, so, yeah. so it really is a case of whether it's greenhouse grown or field grown, it's the same, it's, it's the same. good for you. Yep. Eat your fruits and vegetables. Yep, yep. <laughs> That's it. Oh, cool. Well, then uh, maybe we can go on from here and see some of the guys picking some of the fruit. For sure. Now, Joe, we've moved into, obviously, from yellow peppers to the red pepper side of the greenhouse. Um, and it's picking over here. Is that a is that a pepper that's worth picking? Um, this one here, I would say, can wait a little bit longer. We're looking usually for 90% color. Uh, we don't want to ship it too green because by the time it gets in the store, we need it to be fully colored. So again, they don't know that it came from a green pepper. This one here is about ready. They would pick it in this round. Um, this one here would wait probably until next week, Tuesday, so early next week. And then this one here has probably got till the end of next week, about four or five days until it would be fully ripened. Mm -hmm. Um, now, as we see, there's a uh, few folks here picking today, but they're not Canadians that are picking. A bit of a controversial subject. Where are they from? Yeah, so this is probably a major point of controversy, especially within the greenhouse industry, um, offshore workers. And we have about 12 of them working here. Um, we supplement them with, uh, or we supplement local labor with offshore um, in order to make sure all the work gets done. Um, we usually try to uh, work it together to make it fair uh, for both parties. Um, it's not easy for us to bring them in. We have to prove to the government of Canada that uh, we cannot hire local people or uh, local people are unwilling to do the work. And then from there, the government will give us an allowance to bring in people. And it's very uh, strictly regulated by the government. Um, we try to make it fair for both parties. So um, locals are looking for more 40 hour week roughly and uh, holidays and uh, weekends off. So we try to give them that to make sure job satisfaction is there. And then for the offshore, they're looking more for the longer hours, they're willing to work weekends and work the holidays. So we roughly sit around 50, 55 hours per week. Um, as for pay, People often think, again, a misconception that we uh, are not paying minimum wage to the offshore workers or in some way we are uh, being able to bring them in a lot cheaper than Canadians. Uh, however, they are paid minimum wage. Uh, that's a base rate fee that uh, we have to pay. And then also we uh, would pay for part of their housing. And we pay piece rate to everybody here. So everyone works on a piece rate program. So picking is paid per kg and pruning and wrapping would be done uh, per stem. And then they would just, uh, there's a computer program where they log everything in and then we track and pay based on that. So they can make bonus on top. And some of the top pickers would be sitting at 15, 16 dollars an hour. So there is an incentive to go quicker here. Mm -hmm. All right, now um, maybe what we'll do is we see the guys picking, we'll see where you're taking the picked peppers. Yeah, for sure. So Joe, we've come through, well, basically just a door to get from the greenhouse to this packing room. What are we looking at here? What's this fancy machine? So this is the pack line. Um, everything is packed on site. Every box is 5.1 kgs that leaves the facility. At the far end, you can see there is a weigh scale where the bins are weighed, and that's how we can calculate our piece rates for the employees in the greenhouse picking. And then from there, it is dumped through the dumping station, goes across a line um, where they would uh, check for any quality issues. And then from there, the computer has weigh cups that uh, weighs each one. And then we get paid based on size. So um, the less peppers uh, needed to make a box full, uh, the heavier peppers, then we get paid more. And then as they get smaller, we get paid less. Okay. And many of the smaller end is used for bagging, uh, and that's where you get the mini sweets and that. Um, but that's done by the marketer. Every pepper that leaves the facility has a product code on it, a PLU. And that's uh, applied automatically, as you can see there. And they um, have our company name on it along with our marketer so Suntastic would be on there too. So. Now where could people find peppers from Meniskill in here? Um, I believe it's sold mostly locally so we actually don't know exactly where they all end up um, but as you check in the store you can see the code. Um, in regular stores, Walmarts or Superstore, Loblaws, um, Costco even takes um, some so we've got them all over the place. It just goes through uh, a marketer um, and then from there it goes to Toronto or wherever it needs to go for the needs to go. Oh, wonderful. Well, thanks for the tour, Joe. Appreciate it today. Yes, thank you very much for coming by. I think it's great to show people around, so thank you.